Okay, so we're going to look at a, an example of a binomial distribution. Um, suppose that 80% of students surveyed live within five miles of South Seattle College. If six students are selected at random, what is the probability that at least four of them live within five miles of South Seattle College? Um, so this is an example of a binomial distribution. And in order to use the binomial distribution, we have to show that it satisfies the conditions of a binomial distribution. So this is where I use a template. And you could just have this on a blank sheet of paper it's set up exactly like this. So to show something as a binomial distribution, it has to satisfy these three conditions. And we have to identify what a success is. So the fixed number of trials, n in this case, we're choosing six students, so n is six. And there are two possible outcomes. Either the student lives within five miles of South Seattle College, or they don't. So the success is that they live within five miles. And the failure is that they don't live within five miles. And we need to find the probabilities of each of those. Um, those two things are complements for each student. So their probabilities will add up to one. We are given the probability that they do live within five miles, 80%, 0.80. So the probability they don't live within five miles is one minus that, or 20%. And again, those two numbers have to add up to 1, 1 1.00. And then you know, each trial needs to be independent. Each of the six choices of students is independent. Usually, we just sort of check this. Um, we don't, there's nothing to really do here. We just list it as one of the conditions. And then the thing that I think is important here is to recognize what is a success and actually state it. So x will represent the number of successes, and x is our random variable. And in this case, it'll be the number of students out of the six who live within five miles. And so this idea that you're gonna, we're gonna use a template to just set up and determine whether something is binomial will help us. Um, I'm just gonna recap what I did here on the next page. So again, we have n equals six. We have two outcomes, success and a failure. Probability of success is 80%, probability of failure 20%. And the number of successes is what x represents, the number of students who live within the five miles. Once we have that template satisfied, we can determine this is a binomial distribution. So in our text, we use this notation x. This little tilde means x has a binomial distribution where the p comes in. And these are the parameters we need to know, n and p. So in this case, n is 6, number of trials, and p is the probability of success, 80%. Um, so then we'll go, turn to Excel to find any of the probabilities that we need. So in this case, um, we'll, I'll generate the probability distribution function or its table for the entire possible outcome. So the function that we're going to use is binomial.distribution, and it wants four inputs, the number of successes, the number of trials, the probability of success, and whether or not we're doing a cumulative distribution or not. So in this Excel function, S represents a success. And for our case here, cumulative is going to be false. Um, by the way, in Excel, True and false should always be all caps. I think in a few places I have them as lowercase. Um, the Excel wants them all caps. Okay, so we're gonna jump over to Excel. And I'm gonna look at all possible outcomes. So X, the number of students that we're asking is six. So out of the six, we could have anywhere from zero to six who live within the five mile radius that we're looking for. Um, and then we're going to set up this probability function here equals, I'll just turn my cap locks on, binomial, and there it is, binomial dis dot distribution. And then notice down here, number of successes. Well, that I'm going to get from the table here. Um, I'm going to use 
I could type zero here, or I can type A2 for that previous cell, comma, the number of trials, that's N, six, probability of success, that's 0 0.80, and cumulative, I'm gonna type false. And I could just start typing false and then click on it. So you can see up here, I have it in my table, it's easier to see. I now I'm going to just dot distribution, A2, 6.8, and false. Tab out of there. Um, I've already rounded this to four decimal places, so um, you could do that. Here's to five decimal places. Generally, we go to four. Um, if they're all zero, we represent that as like a little zero with a plus after it. Then I'll grab the corner and drag that guy down. And we saw from the previous stuff, one, one good thing to check is that this sum adds up to one. So I'm gonna, down here in this bottom cell, below the table, I'm just gonna sum these numbers up. The sum of all the probabilities from the domain should equal one, and it does. Okay, so that's my probability uh, distribution function. Um, and that means, you know, what's the probability that one person lives within five miles? 15.0015. What's the probability that four people live within five miles? Uh, about 25% or two, four, five, eight. Okay, so I'm gonna copy that table over into my notebook. And oftentimes it's good to write these tables down as well. Here we go. And we'll go back to our original problem, which we're looking for the probability that at least four of the students live within five miles. So at least four, at least four means, so the question really is, do we want to include four or not? At least four means four or bigger. So four, five, or six in this case. And in the table, that's these three rows. So to find the probability that X is greater than or equal to four, or at least four, that would be to take the sum of the last three probabilities in this table. And if I add them up, 0.2458 plus 0.39, oh, I wrote that down wrong, plus 0.3932 plus 0.2621, and this is the wrong figure. So I'm gonna jump over to Excel and just show you how I can add those three things in Excel. Equals sum, I can manually type the numbers in or I can just click on these three cells, B6 colon B8. 0.9011, 90%. And then we are done with that problem. I'm gonna do another example with the same uh, set of circumstances. So again, a binomial distribution, but I'm gonna ask a bunch of different questions, um, including questions about its mean and its standard deviation in the next video.